Hello and welcome to a new video. My name is Herwig Juster and today we discuss the difference between glass filled and glass fiber reinforced plastics. Okay, let us get started. Here an overview. So we will start with the difference glass filled uh, versus glass reinforced plastic in terms of properties, what you can see here. Then we discuss fiber and fiber length retention followed by glass fiber sizing which is a key element and also shows immediately the difference between filled and reinforced. Okay, glass filled versus glass reinforced. So here in this table uh, I present you an unfilled uh, uh, POM acetal homopolymer and we have here the, the unfilled grade uh, along with the 20% glass field and the 10% uh, glass fiber reinforced as well as a 25% uh, reinforced grade. And uh, here the with the reinforced grade the fiber is coupled to the polymer matrix and you can see the consequence of this coupling immediately in the strength um, uh, of uh, of of these uh, reinforced grades, look here we have 95, 145 megapascal compared to the unfilled with 70, and glass filled with uh, 60. So it's a it's a really excellent example to show the difference between glass filled and glass reinforced materials, and this we will discuss also in some more uh, detail because this distinction also exists for some other polymers. So a word on fiber and fiber length um, retention. So when you think of the reinforcing capability of fibers, it is uh, related uh, in a large part to to a property uh, which is known as aspect ratio. And the aspect ratio is nothing else than the ratio of the fiber length to the fiber diameter. And uh, uh, you can say that, uh, or it is also known, that with increasing aspect ratio the, the properties such as strength and modulus improve. And this is also the, the motivation, um, or was the motivation to develop long, uh, long glass fiber or, or in general long fiber compounds, where you increase the length of the fibers to 9 up to 12 millimeter instead of the the one to two millimeter length for this uh, typical for short uh, fiber compounds and uh, yeah and when you think of uh, long glass fiber products they are not compounded in a classic way because this would um, uh, reduce the length of the the fibers uh, dramatically so there it is more used uh, uh, the, the fibers are pulled through uh, a bath of molten resin and then cut into the desired length. And now the important question is also what causes fiber length reduction and what we can do to, to prevent this. So when you take these long class fiber products and process them in injection molding, so one, one topic is screw rotation. So it's uh, always a combination of revolutions per minute, recovery time and back pressure. Um, so here you have to find the, the sweet spot. Um, however, you also need back pressure to, to provide a stable volume of the material in front of the uh, screw at the start of the injection. So uh, here it's important to, to find a point where it does not uh, harm and um, yeah. Okay, next topic is the glass fiber sizing. And when you f uh, glass fiber sizing is important because it's um, it, it's a, a, f a treatment of the fiber of the of the surface of the fiber to improve the adhesion of the polymer to the glass. So there are different sizings which are optimal for different polymers and different uh, requirements. Like when you need a water glycol stable sizing, you can uh, go more with a silane 
uh, type of chemistry. And of course, there are also some cases where a good sizing is not sufficient to produce an optimal bond between the polymer and the fiber. So in general, the bond from the fiber to the, the um, polymer is important to because it adds it adds the strength and it can manage the stress on the material when the polymer starts to undergo mechanical overload. So here the fibers you have to imagine are stronger than the polymer matrix. So they can increase the strength of the entire compound because the, the stresses are jumping, you can more or less imagine from one fiber to the other and let the polymer uh, matrix untouched. However, if the bond between the polymer and the glass fiber is weak, then the transfer of the load is not efficient and uh, you cannot realize the, the, the benefits of, a, uh, of the glass fiber. And uh, this is the important point. If the bond between polymer and glass fiber is weak, transfer of the load is not efficient. And, um, and this is also the main distinction between glass field and glass fiber reinforced. So if the glass fiber is simple added to the polymer without any bonding, good bonding, the material is glass filled. If the bond between the phases is optimal, so you have really a good um, um, adhesion between the fiber and the, the base polymer, then the material is considered glass reinforced. And this is uh, the difference what are written here also um, to, to show you. And um, to, m to make that clear, I, I have here another, so we watched the example of, of POM. Um, another interesting example is polypropylene. So I have here again a little property table, 20% glass field and 20% glass reinforced. So you can immediately improve the tensile strength. And um, when you think of polypropylene, uh, in the past it was only just glass field because uh, Polypropylene is a non-polar uh, non polymer, and yeah, nothing sticks to it. So, <laughs> including also the glass fibers. However, in the 1980s, they started uh, to work with a process known as chemical coupling. So, where you um, made uh, you made adjustments to the chemistry of the polypropylene backbone um, to introduce a bit of polarity, and this polarity helps to improve the bond between the polymer and the glass fiber. And um, so this created also then a new market for polypropylene as they can really compete with some of the engineering thermoplastics. Um, yeah, and since uh, suppliers and uh, companies are pushing the borders, you could improve this polarity, improve the glass fiber bonding and so on. So it gets better and better uh, grades. So, and you also have, you can say that, yeah, uh, let's say this 10% increase in strength, what you can see here is not uh, the big jump. Um, however, uh, such improvement in this magnitude uh, in short term properties has the potential to double the fatigue life of a product. So we should not underestimate this either. And I have another example is uh, PPS and the optimal glass fiber sizing. So PPS offers many advantages. So it's uh, good flowing. It can be good filled, highly free, 65% uh, compounds are available and it has this high temperature resistance uh, long term uh, and uh, as well as short term and uh, so it is also then another advantage of PPS is the excellent chemical resistance and um, we know uh, other polymers they cannot handle very well for example hot water and for example PPS can handle hot water and also chlorinated water for example 
And when you think of engineering polymers, like the, the poem we already discussed, or polyamides or thermoplastic polyethers, they hydrolyze in hot, wet environments. So they really degrade. However, PPS has no problem with that. So in the past, you start using more and more glass fiber reinforced PPS in hot uh, chloride environments, uh, water glycol environments. And however, what you found out is that the material showed failure and people are wondering how, how this could happen and they evaluated that and they found out that it was not the PPS itself, the base polymer who failed, it was the, the, the bond between the polymer and the glass uh, did break down and with such a, with such a interface uh, weakened uh, the, the parts just lost the structural integrity and failed. So what you what they did in the past, you developed new coupling technologies, um, like the silane coupling, what we also discussed before, and improved then the bond between class and uh, the, the PPS. And uh, now this is now there's no problem and uh, it's widely used, like in automotive for um, water glycol pump uh, type of applications. Okay, if you want to find more out about polymer engineering topics, I highly recommend you my blog, findoutaboutplastics.com, as well as my online courses on material selection. I will link you both my blog and online courses in the description below. Okay, which video to watch next? In this video, we discuss the, um, uh, how to estimate the residence time in extrusion uh, using a simple calc online calculation tool. Thank you for watching and do not forget to subscribe and smash that like button. Till next time, bye!